I'm Tom, and in this video, we're going to be interviewing Ben Gabler. Ben is the CEO of Rocket.net, a WordPress hosting company. So thanks for joining us, Ben. Oh, absolutely. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. I've definitely been looking forward to it. So excited to kind of jump in. So what I'm basically going to do is just go through a list of questions about Rocket.net as far as like speed, specs, your Cloudflare Enterprise, and so forth. Your homepage literally says the fastest WordPress hosting, and I've heard that get tossed around quite a bit. So why is yours the fastest? Yeah, you know, it's funny when we thought about what is the best way to describe what we're doing and it ends up with the gimmicky cliche, we're the fastest. But at the same time, there is a lot of truth to that. You know, really the way the reason Rocket was born was, you know, my tenure at StackPath, you know, one of the companies we bought was Max CDN. And I'm sure you're familiar with that name. It's been in the WordPress space for a very long time. Uh, W3 Total Cash was one of the largest, you know, affiliates at Max CDN. And we saw a lot of WordPress users, but what we saw was a lot of people trying to do this partial CDN integration. And the problem was it wasn't solving their actual HTML delivery needs. And you would end up with a five to six second time to first byte, but all the images would be really quick. At StackPath, I started working towards, you know, building this specific WordPress user experience. And I talked to some hosting providers out there and they just didn't get it. You know, Kinsta was one of them, you know, I'll give them a little a little shout out there for that. Talk to uh, some of the old team there. I said, hey, like this edge thing is a pretty big deal. This was probably 2019. And I said, I think we could really, you know, create some disruption with this and just kind of fell on deaf ears. And that's when I think Brian Jackson was leaving and it just, the conversation just stopped there. Even talked to the folks that spin up WP quite a bit, but it, you know, it, it never really progressed. Also talked to WP Rocket quite a bit, never really progressed. So, you know, I saw this huge opportunity in the market to kind of create this all-in-one solution that's really just the evolution of content and, and WordPress and all things delivery. Brought this to the board at StackPath, and they were kind of more interested in going after the enterprise customer, and you know, like Disney and your Amazons of the world for content delivery. And for me, you know, my heart's always been in hosting. I decided to, to leave and start a company again. You know, I, I had a hosting company that I started in 2006. I was at HostGator. I think I was employee number 10. And when they moved to Houston, I really wanted to stay back in Florida. So I started my uh, company, Host9. And over four and a half years, built that to just under 2 million in ARR, completely bootstrapped. And in 2010, Brian at HostGator said, hey, you know, you know why, don't, why don't you come you know, join us again? And you know, I was already out in Texas anyway, just trying to hire people out there for Host9 and ended up selling Host9 to HostGator. And from there, I took on COO and, you know, really helped open up the Austin office and, you know, kind of a lot of operational things at HostGator. And then they decided to sell the company. It was kind of the perfect time for me to take a break. So I moved back to South Florida, did some contracting jobs here and there, you know, UK2 Group, IX Web Hosting, and then ultimately landed as senior product manager role at GoDaddy. And that's where I really just saw hosting at scale like I'd never seen before. You know, we relaunched all the hosting products at GoDaddy. I launched the cPanel product. There was a managed WordPress product and a new Windows product. And on the cPanel product, we were seeing like 2,600 signups a day. Like it was out of control. And that's when I really saw things at scale. And corporate world wasn't really for me. So took, you know, exited GoDaddy and decided to do a couple SaaS startups and worked with a really good friend of mine, Dave Costin. You know, him and his brother effectively built cPanel back in the day. And that's where I got like a PhD in software engineering that translates into product engineering. So, you know, all of that combined, uh, you know, I decided to go out and, and build a new company to solve this speed, security, and simplicity problem around WordPress hosting and delivery really more than anything. So that's where, you know, I reached out to Cloudflare through some relationships I had there, was able to get into the Cloudflare startup program and, you know, build out this new offering. But the way I built it was... I had ran a CDN for two years from the other side of it. So I got to see all the things that we struggle with as a CDN provider, which Cloudflare had already solved. So now putting myself in the customer's share, I was able to build this all-in-one solution that already had the full page caching, the security, you know, all these things that were just on, always on. And what a lot of people probably don't know about our product is we don't use workers at all. You know, we, we literally leverage a traditional CDN in a, in a very non-traditional way with how we you know, built all of our IP around it. So we do a lot of really cool stuff there. Um, you know, I'm sure you've seen in the market, a lot of other people are starting to throw these words Cloudflare Enterprise around. Uh, you know, I did a pretty good blog post uh, from what I've been told around, you know, Cloudflare Enterprise is not an add-on or a feature, it's the future. And that's really what Rocket, you know, started out as. It's like, hey, we're, we're going to solve this speed and security problem. And then from there, you know, we did some review signal tests 
And, you know, we saw that we still kind of lacked in the dynamic areas. You know, we solved that by using much better hard drives and EME storage and a lot of other optimizations that happen on the platform. So, you know, it's not just a static website solution, but even in that state, you know, we only see about 8% of traffic hitting our actual hosting servers. And, you know, we do a, a close to 200 terabytes a month of delivery. When we go back to the fastest WordPress hosting, you know, I think it's really speaking true to the point that, you know, we've started with this edge first approach and we're, you know, scientifically getting things as fast as humanly possible by putting content as close as possible to the visitor. So that that's where that brilliant, you know, marketing gimmicky fastest WordPress hosting in the world came, came from. But ultimately the core of Rocket is really three things and it's, you know, simple, fast and secure. And, you know, that's how we've kind of built the company. But when I do describe Rocket, it's really a SaaS platform that's currently focused on WordPress hosting. So what that means is we're not your traditional hosting provider. You know, cPanel is not our product. It's an orchestration layer. That's it. Uh, we've built everything on top of it. And that's where we've created this user experience like you've seen with your sites is not only is it fast and easy and secure, but you know we have a 41 second average response time on chat. I think it's six minute average response time on our help desk. And, you know, that comes from 20 plus years of, of experience in this industry and understanding how to actually service the customer, because at the end of the day, that is the biggest secret to success. So is Cloudflare Enterprise really the secret sauce to the, the fast time to first bite? Yes and no. I, I think their, their footprint and platform makes it possible. But a lot of what we've done with our platform behind Cloudflare really makes it possible. You know, there's a lot of IP that we have that knows how to treat specific requests whether it's cash headers, you know, and, and other various things that we do. I, I would say it was our USP when we first got started. It, nobody was doing it. So it was very easy to go out there and tout like these different, you know, unique selling propositions. But I knew that that was just going to be a matter of time before others caught on and, and tried to copy it. They're still not able to get the full page caching right, but they will. It's not impossible. So, you know, now that we've already had that solved and others are focused on that, we're, we're more focused on providing value to the customer whether it's features like activity logging, using the CDN in different ways. You know, we work very closely with the Cloudflare CDN team. Uh, they have some really cool stuff coming out that we're going to leverage. It's really always comes back to customer, what I call sort of customer, uh, you know, success. So everything we're always doing at Rocket is about the customer success. And, you know, these other companies like say they're developer focused, but have no API. I don't know about you, but every developer I know loves a good API. So everything at rocket.net, API first. Our entire portal was written in React. And it was written in a way that, you, you know, you could literally embed our portal anywhere in the world. So we have multi-million dollar resellers that are actually embedding our portal in their customer control panel and using everything one-to-one -one with customized colors, fonts, this, that, and the other. That's kind of where that SaaS platform meets hosting comes into play is, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah, like we're managed WordPress hosting, you know, it's been around for a long time, but nobody's really doing it like this. Can you talk about your specs and some Cloudflare enterprise features? and how they can improve things like Core Web Vitals and even a WooCommerce site? Absolutely. So, you know, our hardware is all anywhere from 32 to 40, you know, core servers, all running 128 gigs of RAM minimum and rated NVMe storage. So, you know, being as our servers only see eight to maybe 10% of traffic overall, they basically just sit idle all day. You know, we don't have a node in our fleet that runs at more than 12% utilization at any given time. Now, obviously there are spikes that'll happen. Yoast does a bad, up, you know, an update that maybe locks a bunch of tables and, you know, big, big sites end up creating a pretty big bottleneck for themselves. But because of that, we're able to do things like no limit on PHP workers. We offer Redis for free because it honestly helps the hosting company just as much as the customer. That's where you solve a lot of problems for things like WooCommerce. You know, we're the first company to launch Relay. Uh, cache, which is built by the creator, you know, Till, who made Object Cache Pro. So we offer a new enterprise tier that's just been super popular for us. And, you know, the main reason is it's, it's doing something different and, and bettering an experience. When it comes to Cloudflare Enterprise, you know, there's content that can't be cached. And I hear all day on Facebook groups, oh my God, Lightspeed's amazing. And then, you know, screw Nginx or screw Apache. Da, da, da. If you're focused on your web server being the magic part of your website, you're failed. Like you've failed. And the reason is, you know, that may work really well if your site's in Virginia and everybody is in Virginia or maybe the U.S. As soon as you try to go international, you're, you're losing. So when we think about Cloudflare Enterprise, things like Argo Smart Routing, you know, that'll actually, it's almost like a GPS for a request. So when you don't have smart routing, 
Cloudflare just does best effort, similar to like a trace route of delivering a request to your origin. So your hosting server. When you enable smart routing, they basically say, hey, here's a GPS and here's how you get exactly to that origin. And it ends up improving things by about 30%. That's a big component of our dynamic site acceleration. And then on the flip side of it, you know, they're now in, you know, over 250 locations. I think it's even 275 now. And we also leverage a, any data center that's got peering with Cloudflare or sometimes in the same Equinix facilities they're in. So when you can, when you think about the request traversing the Cloudflare private backbone, like it does with Argo smart routing, it, it comes in, in Brazil, maybe in, and inside of Cloudflare's network, it knows our origin might be in Los Angeles. It'll actually, you know, go through the Cloudflare private backbone and then out in Los Angeles. And we're probably, you know, we're in Equinix there or one Wilshire. I forget which one it is exactly, but it's, it's typically, it's literally yards away from their data, you know, their, their servers. So that goes a long way too. So those are just the things that, again, coming from an operator of a CDN, you understand that that type of stuff matters. Somebody that's, that's doing a Cloudflare enterprise implementation, you know, they don't really understand the mechanics of it. And there's so many features that it provides. So we, you know, at, at Rocket right now, we don't do any content manipulation whatsoever. We sometimes will proxy Google fonts, but we don't do any sort of optimizations because what we saw is customers have their favorite caching plugin, right? Like some want this one, some want that one. And we don't ever want to have too much business logic out away from their site because then it could create, like if we're already minifying and they're minifying, they get a bad experience on Rocket, right? That doesn't mean we, we, we may have some optimization things coming, but you know, we're doing it in a way that you know, is, is much different than, than any other provider out there. You mentioned a lot about the data centers. So when people sign up for a hosting company, I know traditionally they look at, do they have a server location that's close to my users? With Cloudflare Enterprise and full page caching, how important is it to actually choose a location close to your users now? That's a great question. I, I think if you're in the US and you're focused on the US, it doesn't make any difference. You're probably talking 20 milliseconds here or there, whether you're in LA or uh, Ashburn. Um, now, when it does matter is let's say, you know, you're in Europe, whether you choose London or Amsterdam, negligible, right? And you'll never notice just like the US. There's things like Frankfurt for data privacy reasons. You know, some, some of our customers need their data to stay in Germany, no problem. And then we have Singapore. And of course, you know, one of the biggest markets is Sydney. You know, we have a uh, new partnership coming out with a, a very big provider in Sydney that's also leveraging the Equinix facilities in Sydney. So super excited about that. But if you're in Sydney, that's a very you know, good example of you don't want to be hosting in Ashburn if you're in Sydney, because it's no secret that Sydney's always been challenging with connectivity inside and outside. But what's also interesting is Cloudflare's free tier actually doesn't have any locations in Sydney at all. So it all ends up delivering from like LA or maybe Singapore. And that's where, you know, having our enterprise footprint there really gives our agency partners a huge leg up to host their customers and give them Cloudflare's benefits without adding one to two seconds of time to first bite. When we previously talked earlier, you said that you actually built your data centers close, if not in Cloudflare's data centers. What are the benefits of doing that and why did you do it? Cloudflare utilizes these internet exchanges, right? And it's almost like a, like a super highway of all these different providers that have all this connectivity going into the same building. So Verizon, AT&T, uh, Google, you, you think of all these different providers, like pretty much every uh, ISP, they go into these, you know, um, internet exchanges. What that does is it really reduces the amount of hops. If you're in Miami and you want to stream something or view a website, Cloudflare has a pop in Miami, right? And they're in an internet exchange in Miami. If you go to, I think it's speed.cloudflare.com, it'll actually show you which pop you hit. And that's also where we have your content cached. So when you think about the server, if Cloudflare has a miss, it's very important for it to at least have that connectivity back to the exchange. So, you know, like Google is a couple of hops away from an internet exchange. So like if you're in North Carolina or South or North Carolina, whichever one they're in on US East for Google, you know, you're effectively going to call it Atlanta and then you're going to like another location. Whereas with Rocket, we're in that Equinix in Atlanta. So it ends up becoming really important when it comes to, you know, Core Web Vitals, time, especially now that Google's measuring time to first bite, you know, there's a lot of things that that come into play there. So it's it's been super important. Connectivity is a big part of when we select a data center. Do they have a, a relationship with Cloudflare with with direct connect and peering? Do they? And if they don't, are they in the Equinix facility? So that all that comes into play with us. Going back to 
Cloudflare Enterprise, and I know Cloudways and Kingston and a few other companies have started adding these. Exactly how is yours different? So ours is different because we actually understand it, right? You know, Cloudways sat on our website for weeks, combing through our pages to grab content and things like that. I, I can't really speak much towards Kinsta, but, you know, they they launched their integration a long time ago and they still don't have the caching aspect. And again, like I know it's coming. It's not that things can't be done with Cloudflare, but the way that these companies are doing it is just, is just a lot different approach. And I think the, you know, the biggest thing, the biggest differentiator is none of them have ever run, ran a CDM before. You know, I don't, I don't think that they actually understand what they're building. And, you know, and again, that just comes, you know, it's an opinion, but based on what I've seen, you know, I think that's the biggest difference, right? Like, and for us, we've already solved that problem. So we're not focused on that. We're focused on value. Like, where do we improve the customer experience? What features can we build? What's hurting them, right? That's, I think, the biggest difference with, you know, what we're doing at Rocket. How about Flying Proxy? You know, I try, I've tried to partner with him for over a year now, whether it was with Flying Press or even on Flying Proxy. I think it's a cool idea. I don't, I personally have been doing this for 20 years. I don't understand how the economics will ever make sense on that. And I don't understand how it'll be a very profitable business. That's just my opinion. Um, I think some of the features are great. You know, I, I think, uh, I think again, it's getting into the table stakes area. Like I think there's, those things are also going to become check boxes with a hosting provider. You know, when you look at this core web vital thing, everybody's just going to expect that to not be a problem eventually. Or core web vitals may may not be, be as much of an issue. You know, we have huge, a lot of customers that just don't even care. You know, they just want fast. Like if they see their website load fast, they're happy. If they get support quick, they're happy. Um, so I, you know, from what I've seen, you know, we haven't seen any disruption in, in our growth because of it. You know, we haven't had customers really bring it up. Maybe one or two here and there, but you know, I I just don't understand the economics of it. You know, I've I've ran the numbers a lot, and it just doesn't add up to me. Um, but again, I, I could be way off base there and I'm not sure, but I do think, you know, Gio's a great guy. I think what he's doing is great. I think a lot of companies really should pay attention to, to what's happening there because, you know, he's a smart guy and, you know, if they can make that thing work, I, I think it's a great product. Well, it sounds like a lot of people are copying you for hosting and copying him for his cash plugin. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. Uh, you know, like if I were WP Rocket, I think I would rebrand as an optimization plugin, right? Like I, I, I don't understand why these people still call themselves caching plugins because that's really not what they are. You know, they're actually optimizing your website to an extent. One of the initiatives I'm working on is actually working with other hosting companies to help solve this problem for WordPress. You know, you see all these comparisons of WordPress versus Wix and, and this, that, and the other. And, the, and it's like comparing apples to oranges because one is in a very controlled environment with training wheels and the other is not. You, you could go host WordPress on a $5 VPS that just can't handle any requests. And now all of a sudden WordPress is getting a bad rep. So we're actually working on something to bring to other hosting companies to, you know, solve that problem in, in a, in a Switzerland type way, right? Like, you know, it's not rocket. It's here's this solution that's going to solve this problem for you and your customers. And, and let's get, let's work together and provide a solution for the community and that's one thing i don't i still don't understand about the wordpress space this day is it's so hard to get people to partner whether it's they don't have the apis or they just don't have the desire but for, you know my experience it's you know companies love to partner and work together we, we would have been happy to partner with flying proxy but it was just a complete brick wall there and at that point you get tired of wanting to partner and you just go do it yourself Cloudflare Enterprise, they improve security in their own ways. Um, can you talk about that as well as other ways that your hosting improves security? Yep. So, you know, coming from all the years of seeing attacks, all the years of, you know, CDN and WAF management, you know, Cloudflare's WAF is awesome, but it also, you can't really go to like a high profile WAF setting because it's going to cause issues. So with us, we actually run another piece of software on every server called Immunify 360. And that's got a built-in WAF that's a little more aggressive. We still don't see very many false positives, but there were certain things that we, we were like, hey, that's a really good idea and that should live on the edge. So we would have, we have a lot, you know, probably a dozen plus, maybe, maybe more than that by now, custom WAF rules on Cloudflare to effectively stop that traffic at the edge. It's simple things even like disabling XML RPC across the board. I can count on one hand in two years how many times people have asked for that to be opened up. 
And it's usually always a mobile app for WordPress, but that's it. That hammer sites, you know, if people disable that alone, you know, they, they, they get much more out of their hosting for sure. So we've got a bunch of custom rules that we've put on there. And we've also got our origin-based security for real-time malware scanning. You know, every request, upload, you name it, gets scanned. It's always funny to see somebody try to upload a nulled theme and they don't understand why it's not working. And you're like, hey, well, there's malware in that. So we're killing it. That's what happens. But yeah, you know, I think Cloudflare has got amazing DDoS protection. The other good thing is there isn't a single request on our platform that doesn't go through Cloudflare. So when we do see certain attacks that Cloudflare doesn't mitigate automatically, we can create rules and it's just done right there at the edge. We restrict all traffic to our origin servers unless it's coming through Cloudflare. I know a lot of people that are especially new to Cloudflare Enterprise are a little bit confused about like, do I need to con go and configure the Cloudflare dashboard? We get that question a lot from the more technical crowd that wants control. And I'm like, you don't need it. I'm like, go ahead, list off your page rules. They do. I'm like, you don't need any of them on our platform. We've already accounted for all of these scenarios and things just work. And people always have a hard time believing it, but it does just work. Um, so that's been the interesting thing is the way that we have been able to configure our rule sets and, and, and tweak everything. It just works out of the box. So people don't have to worry about Cloudflare's dashboard at all. They don't have to worry about any settings. You know, the second they launch a site on Rocket, it's already got it all and it's primed and ready to go for WordPress. A lot of people are get uh, frustrated with CPU limits and PHP workers. You said that you don't even limit PHP workers. How are you able to do that? So there's a couple of things behind that. Like number one, you know, with our full page caching, again, only, you know, even on dynamic sites, only, only eight to 10% of traffic will hit the server. Some sites that are more dynamic, you know, they may end up on one of our enterprise plans if they need a, a ton of resources. We don't have to throttle it because there's really just not a need to. It goes back to things like Redis. Like if you implement, the biggest reason a lot of PHP processes will build up is because of MySQL being a bottleneck, right? So I, I don't care how many companies talk about auto scaling, this, that, and the other, it will make zero difference unless MySQL is scaling as well. So the, the, the problem there is, you know, some of these queries will be blocking and, you know, requests start to stack up. On our platform, the more we can leverage things like Object Cache Pro and Relay, you know, we can help mitigate, you know, min like minimize the amount of MySQL that's actually used. So that, that's a big part of it, right? So like 95% of the websites on our platform have no need for tons of PHP workers because we also don't run PHP FPM. You know, when you have FPM set up, like you get a specific set of FPM workers and that's it. And as soon as you have two requests on your two workers, like the others will get backed up and, and it starts to delay things. So we actually use, you know, the Lightspeed implementation of PHP and it's not their web server, but the PHP runtime that they've created. And it's much more performant than FPM and it, and it scales much better, especially when you set it up with connection pooling and all these different things that we do. We were able to horizontally scale up to a specific number of threads in PHP, but those children processes then you know, whether they share the cache from Relay on the master process, or they just can do requests simultaneously. We have yet to come across a website we can't handle on a single server setup. And we have websites doing 30 terabytes of traffic a month with a lot of dynamic requests. When you look at a uh, rocket.net's plans and compare them to something like Cloudways on the surface, it looks like you guys don't offer as much bandwidth. Why is that? Do people run into issues with that? And how can people um, reduce the bandwidth if they need to? I think it goes back to being uneducated on what they're actually doing, because the way that they rolled out Cloudflare Enterprise and commoditized the bandwidth is, is just beyond silly. It doesn't make sense. Uh, it, it effectively drives the product into the ground and there's no need to commoditize it, right? Like it's not a commodity product yet. And, you know, when you think about bandwidth limits, the most of the bandwidth limits you're seeing are not necessarily CDN bandwidth, but actual cloud bandwidth included with Vulture or wherever the provider may be. And that's much cheaper bandwidth, right? So like you can go buy a Vulture server that's got like a terabyte of bandwidth or something, but it's, again, it's only out of that one data center and that's it. Do you need a cache plugin on rocket.net? You do not. Uh, now, that doesn't mean your site's going to get a perfect 100 page speed score, you know, that, that's why I think these plugins should really be rebranding as optimization plugins, WP Rocket on our platform, which, you know, right now we use it on our site um, for now. And, you know, the big benefit there is like some critical CSS generation and delaying and deferring JavaScript and 
potentially preloading some fonts. You know, there's a couple of things that it'll, it'll help with, but again, it goes back to, you know, we want our customers to be able to control the content on their site and how it's optimized. Those optimization plugins definitely pair very well with our platform because, you know, when you think about FCP and even LCP, like with our HTTP2 and HTTP3 and time to first byte, we've seen people just move to us with no plugin whatsoever. And they see a 20 to 25 point, you know, improvement on their page speed. So it just, it really depends. Um, and it depends on the site. You know, when they're switching hosting, what are they, what kind of benchmarks and tools should they do for like a before and after test? And what metrics should they be looking for? The main thing is like Speed Vitals has a really good time to first bite test. You know, that one is something we use a lot to kind of show, you know, once things are warmed up, the whole world is getting a great experience on your website. Page speed tricky. You know, the Lighthouse stuff is very tricky because you'll see an improvement on time to first bite and you'll see an improvement on some, some other things because we're able to load assets that much faster. But it really boils down to the content. You'll also, your human eye will notice a massive difference on a website hosted with us and a website hosted somewhere else. Even the Cloudway servers, like, 15 bucks a month it's so cheap i can host unlimited websites cool good luck having two people inside of wp admin at the same time once you start to do more dynamic stuff like managing your website it's going to get brutal you know you kind of look at even all the things that we do bundle in and our hosting actually ends up becoming very affordable for our customers i noticed that too when i was comparing your plans to kingsta you have at least 10 times the amount of monthly visits who are you seeing people move to your hosting the most we're actually seeing a lot from Kinsta. We see a lot from Cloudways and we see a lot from WP Engine. You know, there's a, a combination of price increases or just price gouging. Like some of the things I've seen WP Engine charge for make me sick. Should be borderline illegal with what they're doing. Um, but, you know, it's a service business. So it is what it is. But the biggest differentiator is, you know, I think Kinsta, you know, they were this great company. And I personally don't see the, the customer product side of it, right? Like the focus. Um, you know, like dev can say like whatever, you know, like that's cool, but locals aren't even out for so long. Like what problem is that really solving? I never really saw innovation in this space, like at all. Can you say that these companies would have Cloudflare Enterprise Day if Rocket never existed? I can't, you know, I don't know. I think really just kind of the, the 20 years of experience in the hosting industry combined with the SaaS experience and, and the team that we've got, you know, most of our team has been in hosting for 10 plus years. It, it's just really great customer experience all around and we always focus on the success of our customers so you know like we have things like that you see at a SaaS company like our feature board inside of the control panel where you can vote on different features you can suggest different features you know you don't see a lot of that at other companies grid pain's doing stuff like that i mean they they're doing some really cool stuff now on on their side like close with patrick great guy great company you know i, I really like what they're doing and you know looking forward to seeing them at wordcamp us as well I think the biggest difference is, you know, kind of outlined as, you know, we're not here to grab every dollar we can. Like we're here to provide value. Like, yes, we're in this to make money, but we also want to do it differently than we want to provide value. Like I'm not going to charge somebody a hundred dollars to install Redis. That's like crazy to me. I'm not going to charge somebody that needs four, you know, five workers, hundreds of dollars a month, like for PHP. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. We do see a lot of customers that kind of scale out of that smaller phase into a larger size that come to us. We've seen a lot of people come to us because of Cloudways level support. You know, like our our team will write CSS and help fix broken CSS. Uh, you know, we we help troubleshoot plugins without just blowing people off and saying go contact the developer. Now sometimes you have to do that, but you know our team goes above and beyond, and that's one of the big differentiators. You know, a lot of people claim that they're, they're awesome at customer support, but at what level and what cost, right? The number one statement is don't get too big and suck like everybody else, right? And it's like it's not going to happen. And we've already I've already done that before you know i've already had that growing pain and that's usually what it is growing pains you get a big surge of growth you know like you you have to understand what's coming when when you're in this business and that's really where we're at i, th I think that's a that's something that's impacting a lot of the companies you've mentioned today is i think that scale has really been an issue for them and going back to the number of visits you know i actually wanted to do unlimited but i was told we would then probably be looked at as a commodity provider out of the gate and i didn't want to do that so you know i think now that we've kind of built this reputation up you know, I think that's kind of a direction we're heading. Like, I, I don't know you, but I have no idea how many visits that are unique rocket.net gets. If I'm moving from another company where I've already learned this, or I can see it in a dashboard, sure, I can give you a number. But, you know, I think bandwidth is something everybody sees inside of Cloudflare. They're from like bandwidth has been around forever. This managed WordPress kind of introduced this visits parameter to, and it's no different, you know, bandwidth and visits are the same thing. 
you're going to get the number of visits that probably mean you're going to use this much bandwidth and vice versa. Um, so I'm excited for us to kind of simplify that a lot for the, for the um, customer. Can you talk about your support and uh, your team? You know, our support division is ran by uh, Ryan Flowers. You know, he was at A2 Hosting, I think, for 11 years. Uh, he might have been seven, actually, and maybe he was at Endurance before that. But he was at, you know, a small orange. And, you know, he's just been in the hosting space for probably about as long as I have, if not longer. And he's also seen a company scale from 100 employees to 1,000 employees and so on and so on. So, you know, my strategy with bringing Ryan on was not only was he awesome, but he's seen scale from, you know, small to large having that trickle throughout the team. And I think, you know, the fact that I will get in on phones or chats or tickets and help customers, I, I can do support, no problem. You know, whatever, whatever the issue is, I can go in and debug it. And I think that was really a way to kind of, you know, it really resonates with the team because I'm not just some, you know, boss that's like, oh, go do this. You know, like I understand, you know, the depth on certain asks. I understand how to help fix things with the team. I have no shame in jumping right into chat and helping out when somebody's got four chats going, whatever it might be. And, and I think that's really just gone a long way. And I think the passion and the you know drive for the customer has really uh, spread throughout the organization. And that's something we really hone in on when we're hiring, right? And interviewing. So, you know, it's, it's really neat to see like, like pretty much, I'm actually, I'm pretty sure every employee here has had, a, you know, major accolades at their last hosting position. And we actually don't do any recruiting. You know, it's all just through our website um, or word of mouth from a friendly. So it's, it's pretty neat. You know, I think for us, uh, it's always customer first. It's not our way or the highway. You know, we, we really want to make things work when we, you know, and, and help a customer that just may be in over their head or they have no idea. And, and the way that we even talk about it with our agency partners and our enterprise partners is, you know, we'll give them a private Slack channel. You know, they have the SOS numbers and stuff you know, we're an extension to your team. You know, we are your DevOps. We are your team. You know, like we're here so you can focus on content and making money. That's where I was personally impressed with. I was like, you don't need to be on the phone, but you care about your company enough where you want to be on the front lines. At, at GoDaddy, uh, everybody thought I was crazy because I spent weeks in the call center and I built relationships with what we call the Dragonfly team, which is GoDaddy's. I think they've since deprecated it, but it was their internal support team. And I knew that they were my biggest source of data. So I would sit on chat. I would sit and answer calls at GoDaddy. I would do, t you know, actually fun fact, a lot of people probably don't know, I broke like 18 rules at GoDaddy. When we launched cPanel, there was a six day ticket delay at GoDaddy. And I knew all eyes were on me, the hosting board, like bringing in cPanel at GoDaddy, which was like, you know, they were so against it at first. I knew if my tickets, my cPanel customers sat for six days, or we would have a, a crap product again, right? So I actually took um, user voice and embedded it inside a cPanel, launched our own cPanel help desk. And I was doing like 70 tickets a day when this thing launched. So I'm like, failure is not an option. Failure is not an option. And they ended up seeing that and they, they brought what we called the bullpen, which was like 10 people for two weeks at a time. And I would do those 70 tickets, but through them, like I would help them do these tickets and really level the team up that way. But you know, you just, it goes back to just knowing your customer, right? Like at StackPath, like Lance Crosby did one of the coolest things I've ever seen that'll stick with me forever is, you know, he, he bought a chair and he had customer chair stitched on it. And every meeting you had, you would, you would have the customer in your meeting in that chair. It's just something that we also do at Rocket is like, we're always thinking about the customer in every conversation we have. It's a really important thing to do when you want to be successful in a digital world. I know there will never be a day at Rocket when I'm not in chat. I'm not in the help desk. I'm not on the phones. Like, you know, the further out, of, and then that goes back to like, oh, don't change when you get too big. Like, people that do that lose sight of the customer, whether it's ego or we don't need to worry about that. We're already this big. Like, it's not going to happen. You know, like I I'm not here to, to do that. Can you talk about your affiliate program and uh, why yours might be a better company and program to promote? Sure. So, you know, our affiliate program is flexible. Um, you know, when it comes to large partners, we've worked with Awesome Motive, a bunch of other influencers in the world. We are a bootstrap company, but we're profitable. Right. So, you know, going from, you know, zero to seven figures in revenue in two years with no marketing outside of our affiliate program uh, has been incredible. And, you know, even when I talk to some of my friends in the industry, they're like, no way, I don't believe you. Right. It's like hosting companies don't do that. You know, while well, everybody's looking left, looking right. You know, when I started this company, Google Cloud, Google Cloud, Google Cloud, Google Cloud. So you're buying the same product from three different companies. I don't understand. Right. It's all the same. Um, Google Cloud's a great platform, but it's also very expensive. 
it, it's just one of those things like I don't want to be like everybody else you know I, I never have when we think about even what we've done like creating this this new brand that has really caused you know shaken up the industry in a bit it's 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 been nice and then it trickles all the way down to even the affiliate program you know I'm my really good friend Taylor Hawes you know I, I hired him and his company back then was called Affiliate Apex when I had Host9. And he had me like number one on CJ in like a week. Like the guy is just unreal. And when I sold Host9 to HostGator, he went on to be the CMO at HostGator running all digital marketing affiliates and things like that. You, you may even know Taylor Hawes. You know, he was early site five and, you know, just a really great guy. And what's funny is he actually was going to work for UK2 Group. And he's like, sorry, I, I already signed it and told him I'd be there. I'm like, wow. What am I going to do? And I found his contract with host nine. He actually couldn't do that contract. And I was able to, he's like, you know, he's like, man, that's awesome. Glad you found that. Like, let's go. And he's, you know, stayed with me and went on to host gator and he stayed there forever. I think he was a CMO at endurance. And then he went from endurance to aura with Hari, the, the, the original uh, CEO and founder of endurance or CEO, you know, I still talk to him to this day, but you know, he, I've learned a lot just seeing how he's done things in the affiliate program. And we actually recently hired a guy named Alex Ali to help with all of our um, uh, partner marketing, including affiliates. And, and, you know, he was built the affiliate program at A2. So again, it's, it's like, we, we try to try to do these things with people that have had a lot of this hosting experience. And that's really hard to find. You know, I made several mistakes with agencies along like marketing agencies along the way with rocket because they just tried to treat hosting like every other, you know, niche out there. And it's not at all. Um, it's one of the hardest things when it comes to marketing, like, you know, it's just been one of those things that the brand just been able to thrive organically and through word of mouth and through influencers, top hosting sites that are advertising $2 a month hosting. Like we're not going to perform well there. doesn't mean we don't perform at all, but if they have a managed WordPress sector, like, you know, section on their site, we perform great. Um, but we see a lot of success with influencers, you know, whether it's bloggers and the optimization experts and just different things that really align with with what we do here and a lot of it comes from firsthand experiences with rocket and that really makes its way through different reviews out there and it's not all just fluffy bs like to try and get a sale like it's actually valid points that are made with data and experience i'm sometimes hesitant to promote a company because you got to research them you got to use them and test them and then a lot of the times you have to climb tiers. I did like that you actually offer a flat commission, no matter how many sales you're making. You know, keep it simple, but also keep it fair, right? Like we're selling, you know, we're not selling $3 packages. We're selling $30 plus packages. So when we think about our ROI on that commission, we want it to be worth everybody's while, right? So that's why, you know, we have that $150 number you know, it just keeps it simple. Like whether it's somebody wanting to refer one friend or somebody wants to refer a hundred people a month, you know, like we want everybody to win. Can you talk about the growth strategy? Who are you looking to hire? Um, what kind of people are you looking to join your affiliate program and kind of the talent that you're looking for? You know, a lot of our growth strategy is focused around content, which everybody says that, but uh, you know, there's a, there's a really good book out there, Killing Marketing. And it, it's a great book. And, you know, I listen to it and, and learn quite a bit on, you know, like things like return on audience and stuff like that. You know, so we have a content strategy, but it's it's sort of done in a way where we have two tracks, like one's an organic uh, strategy where we'll throw content out there on keywords that make sense and, you know, build some organic traffic up. We have a great DA score with our domain. And then the second track is really like focusing on a specific type of customer and then promoting that, whether it's on LinkedIn or Facebook and trying to do promotional content to help, you know, people resonate with some of the experiences people have had on our platform. So we're always looking for anybody that's got experience with, you know, copywriting, content marketing, that, that type of stuff. Um, you know, the affiliate program, uh, Alex recently joined uh, about three weeks ago. So, you know, he's still working on his strategy there, but, you know, we've got, a, a, you know, thousands of affiliates built up within our internal systems and share sale influencers. Like I said, whether it's, it's blog bloggers, food bloggers, uh, ad tech has been a huge, huge area for us. Uh, we work very closely with Mediavine and ad thrive and other companies. Um, you know, they, they just love our platform for delivering the ads. When it comes to growth, like we've, we've been focusing a lot on sales and that's a lot of inbound uh, nurturing that, that we have, you know, hired uh, Chad Betty. Uh, he was also at A2, I think for 11 years. Uh, he recently joined the company probably about six to eight weeks ago. And just, again, awesome uh, results there. So, you know, kind of didn't realize just how big our inbound demand was. 
you know, and then we're going to kind of toy around with some outbound and, and lead gen stuff that, you know, that we're going to work through. But you know, that, that's primarily it right now. You know, we've got our hands pretty full with, with what we're seeing inbound right now. So, you know, we're not here to be on LinkedIn because we've had the fastest growth in the world. You know, we, we want sustainable, fast, healthy growth for the business, you know, and again, to continue our profitability. More importantly, I want to make sure everybody at Rocket has fun doing what they do. Um, it's not uncommon to see some of our team members that, are, that have off, you know, join in and help with the conversation, you know, like in Slack. And it's just really cool because we built this culture where it's like, you know, either we all win or nobody wins and we're all here to have a good time. You know, one of the main things I believe in behind Rocket was you know, we built this company to have fun and we want to continue to have fun. We want our customers to have fun. We want our customers to be happy and we want to be happy and we want to have fun. How do people get started on Rocket.net? What might they need to do? in your dashboard or elsewhere to optimize their site when they move? Sure. You know, the easiest thing is just getting started on rocket.net. It's a two-step process. You know, we have a, a coupon that'll give them a, a dollar for the first month. Uh, the main reason we did that is we don't want people to pay for two hosting companies. And we also wanted to reduce the barrier of, or the fear of, of trying our product. So when somebody signs up and, and they have a very large account and they need to move it, we, we don't want them to have to pay us and their old provider. So, you know, we're also very flexible. If somebody's got, you know, hundred websites or 10 websites, we, you know, we make sure we're not billing them until they're done being billed at their current provider and they get their cancellation in. Um, you know, we're interested in long-term relationships, not a quick buck. So, you know, it's, it's not uncommon at all for us to even push things out 60 days before we'll bill a, a customer joining our platform, just because we want to make sure you know, 175 site migration goes flawlessly. Everybody's happy. Everything works. There's no rush, no pressure. And then beyond that, you know, once people are live, you know, they'll see their initial, you know, uh, we've had ad tech customers literally send in upticks after 30 days on their Google search console, just from that massive time to first byte improvement, you know, like they're just immediately ranking a lot better and seeing it. And, you know, we have the data to back that up. Outside of that, we might recommend specific plugins to help them with their scores based on, you know, whatever they're doing on their site. Um, but we, we have something coming very soon to allow our platform to do that. Sounds secretive. It's, uh, you know, we, we've got some big stuff in the works. I'm super excited about it. Uh, you know, obviously tackling the optimizations. It's, I can honestly tell you from the customer base that we have, it's not a lot. Uh, there's not a lot of people that come in demanding, you know, help with core web vitals or even asking about it. But there are things we're working on uh, at Rocket to further enhance the platform well beyond just Cloudflare Enterprise. So I'm pretty excited about that. And, and again, that's, that's one of the things we're kind of known for is like we just we're, we're always working on stuff. You know, we've always got new features coming out that are useful. Like we built a WP CLI terminal inside the portal. If you need to run a quick command, click a button, the terminal pops up and it's just like you're in SSH and you're using WP CLI. It's kind of just where we're at. You know, as we round out 2022, you know, into 2023, we're heavily focused on just more enhancements to the platform and how we can provide more value to the customer. So when you sign up for a Rocket.net account, you get a CDN URL. Um, what do you do with that? And are there any other like, you know, upgrading PHP versions? Are there just general optimizations people should do when using your platform? Sure. Yeah, the CDN URL is basically just your unique identifier for your site. You use it to access your site before you go live with your domain. It allows us to do migration so people can preview their sites before they update DNS and make sure everything's perfect. Um, but at the end of the day, it's just a unique identifier and it serves as your DNS uh, pointer for your site. So that every site gets one, it's unique, it lives with it forever. Um, but there is no need to configure any CDN. There's no need to use it, into, you know, you don't have to put that anywhere. We have PHP 7.4, 8.0 and 8.1. Um, every day, more and more plugins and themes are becoming compatible with 8.1. But, you know, for the most part, again, with our platform, there's not a huge noticeable difference between 7.4 and 8.1. It just depends on what you're doing. Um, so we actually advise customers to try to keep those settings the same in the initial move, uh, because the less changes mean less breakage. So we don't want somebody to potentially go to 8.1 and then all of a sudden it actually slows their site down and they're like, oh, what happened? You know, it's like, oh, it actually shouldn't be using 8.1. You're using 7.4 before. Well, that's about all I got. Uh, is there anything else you want to add? No, I, I, think, I think that pretty much covers it. You know, I really appreciate the time. I, I always uh, enjoy talking, you know, even those couple of phone calls we had. You know, I think, you know, what I love to do is really just kind of 
help educate, you know, anybody that we can on, on what we're doing and why we're doing it. You know, like we don't just say Cloudflare Enterprise, you know, we actually have the mechanics behind it and go into depth on that. So over the next couple of years, you're going to see that become a de facto standard. And it's not necessarily Cloudflare Enterprise, but it's the edge, you know, and, and it's really, what it really is, is delivering content as close as humanly possible to the visitor. So we're, we're working on some cool stuff with WooCommerce around that too. So like I said, we, we've got some cool stuff in the works that I think is, you know, pretty game changing. And you know, I'm excited. So people can find you on Twitter. People can obviously go to your website or are there any other point of contacts you want to leave? Sure. LinkedIn. Uh, and we'll be at, we're sponsoring WordCamp US. So we'll have a, you know, a, a table there. i um, super excited about that. Would love to meet uh, as many people as possible. Um, but yeah, I mean, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, email, you know, Ben at rocket.net. Feel free to drop me a line anytime. You know, I'm always around. I love what you're doing and good luck to you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Have a good one.